Now we're on to the minor chord. The minor chord is also a triad. It's a lot like the major chord, except that the third chord tone is flattened by one half step, which creates a minor third. It has three notes made up of the root, the minor third, we get the minor third from creating our major third and going down a half step, and our fifth. So that's our minor chord there. To construct a minor chord from anywhere on the keyboard, do the same as when you create a major chord and then flatten the third chord tone by a half step. So if we're counting up one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, that's a major chord. And then all we have to do to change it is flatten our E, which is our third chord tone, down one half step to the E flat. So that's our minor chord. So here I'm going to demonstrate all the minor chords, beginning from each key in the octave, as we just did for the major chords. Instead of counting each one, I'm just going to show you the major chord because you will have learned that from the last part of this lesson. And then I'm going to show you how to flatten the third to make that minor chord. So we'll start on C as an example. So we've got our C major chord as we learned in the last one. So that's our four half steps to get to the third and then three half steps to get to the fifth. So that's our C major. And then we're going to flatten the third to get a C minor. Notice the difference in the feeling. In the last lesson at the end, I was talking about how a major chord sounds quite happy and uh, sounds nice, you know. Um, when you flatten the third and make it into a minor chord, it kind of sounds a little bit morbid, a little bit sadder. Just concentrate on that feeling that gives you and it will actually help you to recognise a major or minor chord when you hear it. So if I just, if I just play a chord at random without telling you what it is, what, what chord does that feel like to you? Does that feel like a happy chord? Or does it feel like a slightly sad chord? Okay, this may be, this may be hard to recognise at first. I'll tell you that that one was a minor chord, so it was probably quite a little bit sad feeling. It will be hard to recognise at first, but as you get more familiar with the major and minor chords, it'll become more clear. Okay, so where were we? We just did our C minor chord. Let's go up to the C sharp minor chord. We're going to start with our C sharp major as we learned in the last lesson. And then flatten that third. So that's flatting our third there down to the E. And that's our minor third. Okay, let's try that with D. So there's our D major. We're going to flatten the third down to F. So we get a D minor. Try that with D sharp. So that's our D sharp major chord there, as we learned in the last lesson. And then our third chord tone here, which is the G, we're going to flatten down to a G flat, but we call it F sharp since we're doing a D sharp chord. So that's our D sharp minor. Then we go up to E, which is the next chord tone in our little chromatic scale that we're doing. We do E major as we learned in the last lesson, which includes our E, G sharp and B. And then when we flatten the third, which is our G sharp, flatten that by one half step, we get down to an E minor and just get that sad sound there. It's lovely. Okay, so the next note we're trying is F. We're gonna try, we're gonna do F minor, but we're gonna start with F major. So we're doing our F major, which is F, A and C. We lower the third, as we have been, down to an A flat. And that's our F minor there. Oh, that sounds nice. So we've just done our F minor chord. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing we did in the major chord. Remember, we stopped constructing them, uh, so to speak, and started following the pattern. When our root note shifts, all the other notes can actually shift by the same interval, and then it creates the same chord. What I mean is, so far, we've been moving up a half step each time with our minor chords. And you'll notice, as the root note moves up a half step, the other chord tones move up a half step as well to create the same chord on the different note. So now instead of 
getting our major chord and flattening the third, we're simply just going to move all the notes up a half step at a, at a time. So if we get, if we start with F major, F sharp, F sharp minor, sorry, all we have to do is take our root note up to F sharp, take our third chord tone up the half step as well to A, and take our third chord tone up the half step to C sharp, and then we've got a C sharp minor. So that's an easy little trick you can use. It only works when you are when you are moving by a pattern with the root with the root note. You can do this with our larger larger intervals as well. Just to, as an aside here, if I have an F minor chord and my root note is moving up three half steps, if I want to create a minor chord starting on G sharp. So that means the root note is moving up th three half steps. Then all I have to do with the other chord tones to create the same chord is move up the same distance. So I'm going to count from the third chord tone, which was on G sharp. Um, I'm going to go, which is now the root note, I'm going to go up three chord tones as well. One, two, three. So our new third chord tone is on B. And then do the same thing with our fifth chord tone, which was on C, and we're going to go up three half steps. One, two, three. And that's our minor chord starting on G sharp. So you see how wherever the root note moves, the other chord tone moves as well to create the same chord. Okay, back to where we were. We were at F sharp minor. We're going to move up a half step, go to G minor, which up a half step from the root, G, up a half step from the third chord tone, is A sharp or B flat, and up a half step from the C sharp, the fifth chord tone, is D. So that's our minor chord starting on G. We do the same thing, move everything up a half step. This time we're going to try it in one big go without doing the notes individually. So we've got our, our three chord tones there, and we're going to move up half step all in one go. Let's go. One, two, three. Oh, that was G sharp minor that we're playing now. We're going to do it again. Go to A minor. One half step. Let's go. One, two, three. That's our A minor there. So this isn't too hard, is it? I hope you're keeping up. If you're not, you can always pause the tutorial and uh, come back to it later after you've practiced it. So now we're going to go to A sharp. All up, one half step, all the chord tones. Let's go. That's our A sharp minor. Now we're going to go one more and then we're almost finished. We're going to go to B, up one half step. And that's our B, D and F sharp there. That's our B minor there. And then we're back to C minor, which incidentally was the same chord we started on. So we've just been through all 12 of the minor chords there. This has been a really long uh, part of the lesson for you, but now you know the major and minor chords, or at least you know of them, and you can practice those until you have them in your head. Do, don't be too concerned with um, memorising them at this stage. It's, it's more important for you to be aware of them because in song pond lessons, whenever you're required to play a chord, you will be shown what the chord is and what keys you need to play. But it's good to have this understanding so that you know about the music that you're playing. Okay, let's go into the next part of this lesson now. We'll learn about primary chords.